All right, there we go. There we go. Our first roast battle of the night is a little bit of low testosterone. Low T versus Gen Z. Get loud for TJ Remick and AJ Lighting. Before we start every roast battle, we do three, two, one, roast. You guys ready for this one? Here we go. Get you ready for this one. Three, two, one, roast. Uh, guys, keep it going for TJ Remick one more time. Good friend, make it loud for him. I, I'm happy to be here roasting him. He's a good friend, seriously. Uh, TJ's a new father. He has the mind of a father, the body of an uncle, and the haircut of a lesbian on a cruise. <laughs> DJ, DJ's such a confusing person. I feel like you ask for kids' pronouns right before you molest them. I do. I... It's more consent than you have ever asked for your entire <laughs> life. <laughs> AJ, if you're here, who's kicking snowboarders off your father's ski mountain? Good one, Cuck Dynasty. Uh, I... <laughs> TJ, if you're here, who's DJing the local prom? <laughs> it's the third year you've been asked to leave that prom. <laughs> AJ does, AJ is too young to rent a car, but old enough to go to jail for a long time if you find out how old his girlfriend is. Don't talk about your wife like that, all right. Uh, TJ. Old as shit. <laughs> TJ. <laughs> TJ kind of looks like if John Wayne Gacy was on the Pringles can. <laughs> Once you pop, I do not stop. <laughs> AJ's always saying, you know, if there's grass on the field, play T-ball. TJ is a, a Twitch streamer. <laughs> it's funny enough on his own. Uh, I, it's actually an upgrade for him. Now he's, uh, he's watching 12-year-olds through a screen and not their bedroom windows. <laughs> TJ, you look, like, you look like the Boy Scout leader that touches the kids in the woods. <laughs> yeah, nice hickey, AJ. Uh, <laughs> That's a one for the camera for later. Again, stop talking about your wife like this. I can't. <laughs> AJ, you dress like you tried to steal Facebook, but settled for Kohl's Cash and HPV. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'll be honest. <laughs> TJ, you, uh... You look like a homeless Muppet. You <laughs> do. You... I feel like they had you sell the vaccine on Sesame Street in the free time. I feel like you cried when Hillary won, I'm not gonna lie, I really do. Who taught you about Sesame Street? They don't have that shit on Crowder, what the fuck? <laughs> AJ's the kind of guy, he won't even buy tampons for his girlfriend because she does not require them yet. Again, I don't know how many times, stop talking about your wife like this, TJ, we can't. I don't know, this might be kind of offbeat. Uh, if you look at DJ, I, I feel like you say please and thank you too much at Hooters, you know? <laughs> it's kind of accurate, I don't know. AJ's the kind of guy to fuck a pregnant teenager and call it a three-way. DJ, uh, I don't know if you guys know, he's an audiologist, so he, he sells hearing aids to elderly people. He helps elderly people hear, yes. And they all ask for a refund after listening to his comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, uh, I did go to school. AJ went to school, except he didn't finish. Uh, the only thing that AJ finished was Inside Unconscious Freshman. <laughs> Oh, 
Are we on Joe Gate? What the hell are we doing? <laughs> we lost count, unlike you. We lost count at this point. Uh, what's up? Yeah, are we on last joke or are we good? We're on last joke? Why didn't you fucking say it, Kevin? What are we doing? Right. They, were, they were dealing with what he just said when then you... <laughs> They were rationalizing what just happened to you, and then you didn't have a number. It's a good point, honestly. It's TJ was uh, TJ was bullied in high school. I don't actually know if that's true. I just assumed. I really <laughs> TJ. No, I bullied a shitload in high school. That's why I had so much experience ready for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ready to go. AJ's so white, he seasons his food by shouting the N word at it and hiding it from a tree. <laughs> There we go, there we go. Give it up for AJ and TJ. Give it up for them. Oh my God, gentlemen. So good, so good. We now go to our panel. This is how this is gonna work. They're gonna vote, all right? All right, here we go. I'm gonna start. Uh, let, me, let me start with Mr. Chris Grieco there on the end, Mr. Chris Grieco. Well, hey gang, that was a fucking awesome battle. That was so fun, yeah. Look at these supple lesbians up here. That was great. It was like both ends of the spectrum. That's awesome. <laughs> TJ, great comebacks throughout that whole thing, man. You had some great comebacks. From what I understood about learning about these folks up here, AJ, uh, oh, by the way, AJ, I love your Pringles joke. That was great. Um, TJ, you fuck children. AJ, you fuck teenagers. A little bit. And TJ's wife. That's what I got. <laughs> I liked both of you very much. That was a great fucking starting battle. I think the edge went to TJ. And, but I really love that great job, guys. All right, one for TJ, one for TJ. Let me get Katie Kincaid. Katie, what did you think of these two men that you don't like at all? Oh my gosh, I mean, it's already off-putting that we have two adult men named AJ and TJ. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes. Oh my I mean, God, this both, is a, re this is a rejected like... PBS TV show. I know, I mean, you guys, you both just like you get a boner when you tell your mom to shut up. <laughs> That was honestly, that was a great battle. Uh, I feel like AJ, you had it so hard in the in the beginning. Like I was like, man, this is going straight to him. But then I think TJ, got to keep getting you guys confused. Uh, TJ, you you just swooped in at the end. I will say I did love the Pringles joke a lot. I love that a lot. Uh, but at the end, I really think that TJ just got it by this much. All right, we got two for TJ. Mr. Matt Batmore, Mr. Matt Batmore. This was, this was a great battle between two Six Flags employees. <laughs> <laughs> we have the new guy and the guy who's been there way too long. <laughs> They're like, hey man, stop staring at the kids. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun, dude. TJ, your mustache says you tie kids to railroad tracks. <laughs> <laughs> And AJ, you look like the kid he ties to the railroad track. <laughs> AJ, you look like you sell pills. TJ, you look like you put them in women's drinks. Oh. <laughs> great battle, great battle, both of you. It's a hard battle. I think it's, it's whether you go for who is the most consistent or who had the highest highs. I think for this one, I'm gonna give it to the highest highs. One vote for AJ. I'm gonna go one for AJ. Are we, are we, are we all right. Here we go. How are you guys feeling? A little bit. Here we go. We got, we got two for TJ, one for AJ. Let me just go next to that southern little gremlin right over there on the end. Mr. Brandon Kiefer, how are you? I'm good. How are you? There we go. The Confederacy is still going there? Yeah, we're, we're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Some people were a little bit too excited about that over there. That was my dog right, in the back. All right. I like, I like this. This is a college... Uh, College versus GED. I like this. <laughs> the two extreme ends of a credit score. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with everybody, but I, uh, AJ started strong, TJ ended strong, but I do, I'm giving it to AJ on this one. All right, all right. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Two for two, two for two, and then it comes down to the guy who actually sells pills to children. <laughs> Don't fuck Mr. Mr. Nick Cartwright. Mr. Nick Cartwright, you have the deciding vote. Here we go. Can we get a drum roll from the audience? Oh my God. To see who will win our first battle between these two men who will argue over who has to pay for the cocaine after this show. Well, 
I, both of you guys did really well. But, uh, well, TJ just, you look like you were born with an accordion. <laughs> Not and weird enough, yeah, Al Vankovic over here. <laughs> AJ looks like he was born 13 and a half years ago, so... <laughs> AJ did have the best joke, but TJ really, you, when you close the battle with a smash, you deserve the win, TJ gets the W. Absolutely. There we go, TJ Remick wins it! Give it up for AJ, give it up for both these comedians, that's a hell of an opener. Get loud, come on! Please get loud for Matthew Mitchell versus Mark McPartland! All right, gentlemen, who wants to start it off here? Here we go. You ready? You ready? All right. There we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. Started. All right, here we go, guys. Three, two, one! Awesome. How's it going, everyone? It's uh, it's good to see Matthew uh, here back in McHenry. Last time he was here, it was uh, to rob the Riverside Chocolate Factory. Uh, fun fact, the first time Matthew went to a chocolate factory, he fell in the chocolate river and got stuck in a tube. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, Mark, because you look like Charlie Buckets if Willy Wonka molested him. So that is... <laughs> Oh boy, Mark is from the South, so a lot of people think he's just a racist idiot who fucks his cousin. When really he's a racist idiot who fucks his dog. So it's really a cruel. Hey, keep it in the nuclear family, you know what I mean? Uh, Matthew looks like if the brawny guy fucked the Charmin bear. Basically, I'm, I'm saying he looks like he wipes his ass with heavy duty paper towels. Yeah. Making a lot of cracks about my weight there. I, I understand my jawline is about as soft as Mark's penis doing its best, so I understand. There you go. Oh man, uh, Matthew almost couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he was visiting Derek Chauvin in the hospital. Uh, no? No, he's not, he's not like that. Matthew doesn't like police brutality. No, he doesn't like seeing black people get accosted. Uh, which is why I also don't like watching him do crowd work. Huh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark runs a fantasy football league where the fantasy is that he gets double teamed by the Mahomes brothers. That's true. It's looking good this year. I think we got a shot. <laughs> Oh man, uh, Matthew's here. Lady, make sure everyone in here, when Matthew's around, you cover your drinks, because he will drink every soda in this bitch. Uh, no. Matthew's, Matthew's been actually known to like bigger girls. He doesn't mind if girls have a little meat on them, so long as the girls don't mind that they're gonna have a little meat in them. Uh, I'd recommend you cover your drinks when Mark is around, folks. He's the kind of guy who will roofie you just so you can watch The Departed with him. That's <laughs> Uh, Matthew is, uh, Matthew's unemployed, uh, so he's living off the government cheese, and he's also living off the gas station's cheese, and he's living off Target's cheese, and he's living off Walmart's cheese, also any cheese that comes in a can. Matthew's the only unemployed guy that's showing up to the bread line with the ranch. Mark's dad is a dead alcoholic who claimed to have invented the Bowflex. Uh, that's true. That's true. But that's not the case. He didn't invent the Blowflex. He did only invent a, uh, a son that he didn't have to love. That was really his only invention. Oh, man. My dad, uh, my dad used to drink. He actually died drinking. Matthew's dad actually used to drink and he got sober. Uh, that's gay. Matthew, my dad used to drink. Matthew looks like he has fetal Mountain Dew syndrome. <laughs> Dude, no, Mark is so Irish that his only lucky charms are a micro penis and cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew, uh, I don't even know what number one. Matthew, uh, last one, guys. You guys snuck up on me. All right, Matthew, uh, Matthew started smoking weed at 23. He's going through a bit of a midlife crisis. And, uh, no, it's sad, you know, seeing Matthew now, like, spending all of his time on the couch 
eating snacks, watching cartoons. It's sad to know he's been doing that for the past five years sober. <laughs> Mark looks like the kind of high school math teacher that'll be like, and if you look at the board here, ladies, age is just a number. <laughs> Give it up for him, Matthew and Mark, give it up for him. Oh my God. I love that every, every battle we have tonight is ruining childhood education right now. Absolutely great, let's keep it going, let's keep it going. Nick Curry, you, you closed it last, I'm gonna start off with you this time. Well, do you guys remember that, those commercials where it would be like, hi, I'm a Mac and I'm a PC. Do you guys remember those commercials? This was like one of those, but both of the computers had child porn on them. It's just like, creepy. No, uh, it was a ton of fun. Mark started off with, again, I, in my opinion, the best joke, because imagining Matthew Mitchell as Augustus Gloop floating down a river is funny as hell. But again, Matthew Mitchell closed it with a banger. I gotta go with the closer. Eminem gets the vote. Matthew Mitchell. All right, one for Matthew Mitchell. How are you guys feeling? How are you feeling? Good? Yeah? Brandon Kiefer. Uh, hell yeah. I like you guys. Two different flavors of autism. I like it. <laughs> you lesbian lumberjack over here. I like this. I thought both of you did great, but I got to give it to Matthew Mitchell. All right, two for Matthew. Two for Matthew right now. Mr. Matt Bamwar, how are you feeling, buddy? This was fun. You guys look like you both say the N-word for different reasons. <laughs> Mark saying it to fit in, Matt saying it to keep him away. <laughs> this is a cool. You guys look like you work for competing tow truck companies. Does that make sense? It's okay, swing and a miss. <laughs> this was fun. Uh, great battle, both of you. I, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna give it to Matt Mitchell. Matt Mitchell takes the round. All right, Matt wins it, but I do want to have comments. Important, meaningful, but don't actually influence what happens next comments. Katie Kincaid, because women don't matter. Katie, your thoughts? <laughs> Kevin's words, Kevin's words. <laughs> now that I've won, I think it's a bad Kevin has a restraining order from every woman in here. <laughs> Man, that was a super great battle. Um, you both look like you're into underage girls, but only one of you is successful at it. <laughs> I'll let you guys decide which one. <laughs> oh man, no, this was really great. I loved the uh, brawny man mixed with charm, and I thought that was really great, Mark. Um, but I, my favorite joke was <laughs> Mark's penis doing his best with, <laughs> with the softness. I thought that was so funny. Uh, I think just more consistent, like Matt killed it, so I'm going with Matt. All right, there we go, one more from Matt. Okay, okay. Mr. Chris Rico, you wanna wrap this one up? Now that it's dead silent in here, <laughs> I think we've learned a few things tonight. Number one, I learned that we only book rapists, apparently. <laughs> Number two, I learned that Kevin can't count to seven. <laughs> Number three, I learned that Mark had a bunch of jokes that he didn't give credit for. Number one, the brownie Charmin thing is awesome. Derek Chauvin, I laughed hard. <laughs> Mark, the fetal Mountain Dew syndrome, oh my goodness. Delicious. However, Matthew with the soft penis, obviously. Matthew with the dead alcoholic blow flex, come on. <laughs> Matthew with the age is just a number he wanted for me, but what a great battle, thank you guys. Give it up for them. Give it up for Matt and Mark. Oh my God, thank you guys. Appreciate it, appreciate it. There we go, give it up for them. Let's keep it going, let's keep it going. For this next Rose but I want you guys to make a little bit more extra noise. Because we had a situation, we had a situation, because this happens with the show a lot. Somebody drops out, someone steps up day of. This entire battle you're about to see was written today. Everyone who's doing these jokes writes these jokes just for you and then they disappear into the ether. Please get loud for Ruslan Hafsiz and Max Sorin! All right, guys, who wants to start first? Who wants to go first? I'm going first. There we go, here we go. You guys know the drill? Three, two, one! So, Ruslan is actually a SoundCloud rapper, and by that I mean his songs sound like shit and he looks like a cloud. Uh, he goes under the, he's under the alias Lil Whale. I think, I think I speak for all whales when I say, you don't need the Lil. Yeah, I don't need li a little, so like a cloud, I'm gonna pee on you a lot. <laughs> so Max recently dropped out of a college, 
So recently he got back uh, in his parents' house in his Mojo Dojo Casa basement. It's true. It's true. true. Alright, good one, Kebab Nurmagomedov. Um, Ruslan is not actually from Russia, he's from a country called Kyrgyzstan. And he's not in, he, he came to America not to seek asylum, he just, he started growing tits and then the government thought he was trans. Yeah, I grow the other stuff too. But it's not for you. Uh, Max has never had a girlfriend, you know? And he's waiting for that one and only special someone. Granny with two kids and paid off mortgage. <laughs> I wish I understood that joke. It sounded pretty funny. Um, it's very smart. <laughs> Love after life insurance. <laughs> I have to learn. Good to be here roasting Vladimir Pudding. Um, yeah, I support you. So, Granny gonna choose you. Okay. Um, Ruslan is 36. He actually looks really good for his age, doesn't he? You also, you might recognize him uh, from a, a famous movie. He, he was in this one scene where he ate an entire chocolate cake in front of his whole elementary school. Come on! I mean, who doesn't like a chocolate cake? Yeah. How do you call a person who trusts a fortune teller? Max. So the last visit, uh, he asked for her so for live directions. And so she said him to turn left, then to turn right, and uh, get the fuck out of here. Bring the money next time. Got the money. Um, oh man. Okay, yeah, that was a good one. Bore fact. Um, I asked Ruslan about uh, the Israel Palestine conflict, and this is what he had to say. He said, I denounce all hummus. I much prefer queso. That's the better one. Hummus made from vegetable is gay. I mean, Hamas is still better than war, you know? Everybody agree, right? Nice thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Max, he, he loves EDM, which stands for uh, Exaggerated Drama Monologues. Um, Your turn. <laughs> Monologue, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think I only wrote four jokes on accident. Um, Ruslan's fucking gay. That's it. That's it. You said gay? That was five, right? Five apiece there, guys. Give them a hand, all right? I, I have one more. No, Damn, no, 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 you want to do one more? Yeah, one, one, you guys one, one, one more. You guys want one more from Ruslan? Ruslan, give him one more. Yeah, uh, Max is a believer. So every year he writes a letter to Santa Claus. So here's a list of his wishes. Uh, movie dates for his parents. Uh, delicious toys for his dog. Uh, Starbucks gift cards for his lovely neighbors. Uh, to get rid of herpes. <laughs> And that was worth it. Give it up for Max and Russo. Once again, guys, they wrote that day of. They wrote that for you day of. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Chris, you want to hop in yeah, there, buddy? Yeah, dude. That was fucking awesome, dude.
Number one, I want to say, number one, I want to say, uh, yeah, this came up like a few hours ago. One more time for them doing it a few hours ago. It was five jokes. I should have told you they're only doing five. It's a, it's a lower amount because you know, last minute. Also, you know, there's only so many words Ruslan can learn. But here's the problem I'm having: is Ruslan was just so much more likable, you know. <laughs> In every sense, I mean, you know, it's pretty crazy. When they start, when he started talking, that lady right there, the green dude, she, she was like, <gasps> like she's never seen one of those before. You know what I mean? That was all. That made me laugh. I pointed at him and I said, "To put at you." You weren't paying attention. You just hear it. You just hear another language, and you're like, "I'm tapping out." That was fucking awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, Max, though, Vladimir Pudding, come on, dude. Come on. If you don't like Vladimir Pudding, you're an asshole. <laughs> However, yeah, and what, you said you were from a, you're from a Kurdistan? Is that cheese Kurdistan? Yeah, from, from Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, okay. Yeah. That joke didn't work for me, but... Honestly, this is really tough for me. I, I, think, I think just audience and just the vibe of it, Ruslan was just so great. I'm giving my vote for Ruslan. <laughs> One for Ruslan! One for Ruslan! Max stepped in last minute, though, and Max is a badass for doing that. Yeah, though. absolutely, absolutely. Let's keep it going. Katie Kincaid. Oh, man. Oh, man, this was... I, I really liked sitting over here because I couldn't understand a single word Ruslan was saying. <laughs> but I was like, I just... I'm using the audience as my translator right now because you guys seem to really, really like it. But I will say, I did love the queso joke that Max had. I loved that. That was great. Uh, Vladimir Pudding. I think just purely because I, I just from this position, I could not understand Ruslan. I'm going to give my vote to Max. Give it. She gives her vote to Max. You fucking. All right, we're going to keep it moving. <laughs> Matt Panwar. I will fucking die for Ruslan's citizenship. <laughs> Dude. Dude, every time he gets on stage, I'm like, there's a country fatter than America? <laughs> Keep them coming! <laughs> How do we import these people? Fucking, this is great, dude. Max, you look like Captain America just started doing side quests. <laughs> You're like, there's another country? We'll fuck it up! What are we doing? Dude, this was so much fucking fun. Classic battle, fat versus frat. This was great. <laughs> My favorite rebuttal <laughs> was that Ruslan was like, fucking chocolate cake's great, and you're all were like, he's got a point. <laughs> also, when, when Ruslan said, your turn. <laughs> the classic Uno reverse card. <laughs> fucking great battle, very fun to watch, very fun. I, I love this battle, uh, beginning to end. I just think it was more fun. I love Ruslan, my vote goes to Ruslan. All right, Ruslan's got it, listeners got it. All right, Brandon Kiefer, Brandon Kiefer. Hell yeah, I, I love this. I could not understand Ruslan either, but the problem was I could understand Max. <laughs> <laughs> Max, she looks like something Ruslan got removed from, the, from his back by the doctor. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I thought this was great, and for only a day's notice, this is pretty fucking great. I gotta be honest, because it's really hard to do this shit, and a day's notice is pretty short. Uh, but I will have to say, I don't know what the fuck he said, but I like his spirit. Ruslan, I'm going for you, man. Yeah, there we go. Nick, you wanna clean it up? You wanna clean it up, Nick Cartwright? I, I just wanna tell Ruslan, if he wants to get a free drink in any bar in America, just walk in the door and go, hey, you guys! <laughs> They will fucking love you, man. Absolutely. Goonies never die! There we go! Give it up for Ruslan. Give it up for Maxors. Come on, give it up for both these guys doing this day up. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. To, uh, two great comedians who were with us on our last show. Absolutely great. This is great. This is a uh, slob versus someone who's just a fucking knob. Let's get loud. For Bob Keen versus Kaylee Horton. Start us off. Here we go. You guys know the drill. Three, two, one. What is there to say about Bob Keen? Bob's favorite band is Tool, which is a joke in and of itself. But it does make sense though, because having a conversation with Bob is like every Tool song. 
it lasts way too long and makes you contemplate committing suicide after. Spiral out, motherfucker. Uh, guys, Kaylee's one makeover away from being a six. Do you own a mirror? <laughs> she, uh, she's what happens when Raggedy Ann and Pinocchio forgot to use a condom. When I first met Bob, he, I was shocked to learn that he used to be homeless because I assumed he still was. <laughs> he has less teeth than my six month old niece, okay? Like... Guys, uh, Kaylee, you're built like you twerk with your shoulders. Like, you remind me of a stripper that gives lap dances to circus music. Okay, Zach, hack up an apples. <laughs> I, uh, Bob, Bob is the most Chicago guy I know because every guy is afraid to get near him because of the violence. <laughs> you're, you're one of the few people I've ever met who's been in multiple fights and left the guy looking healthier afterwards. Everybody, give it up for Gumby's slutty cousin. <laughs> You know, Kaylee has a very interesting uh, uh, ethnic background. Uh, her mom is Scotch-Irish, and her dad is one of those inflatable tube things outside of a car dealership. <laughs> Bob, you guys know this, but Bob actually got engaged recently, which is insane for him. Like, I was... Yeah, it, it blew my mind that anyone was willing to marry him, but then I remembered the vow was till death do us part. So she's looking at three to five years tops. <laughs> do you know, like not much of a commitment. <laughs> Kaylee, I'll bet when you come, you make kazoo noises. <laughs> you wish you knew. <laughs> feminist from memory. <laughs> Bob looks like, like he's the proud owner of a Discord where he gets to like share nudes of underage people <laughs> who are related to him. <laughs> My family aren't people. Um, uh, <laughs> Kaylee actually uh, has the word cunt tattooed right next to her pussy. Which makes, yeah, which makes sense. You need to label stuff that's unrecognizable. She looks like she sat on an M80. Uh. I'm literally scared to look at your genitalia. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you might want to eat. What you guys don't know is that, like, Bob's actually a very good cook. And he had to get really good at cooking because he's so used to doing bad comedy, the only thing he's used to eating is shit on stage. One more, one more. <laughs> Kaylee, I'm gonna need you to uh, pull up the left sleeve on your shirt. Really give him the 360. Yeah, Kaylee has the, yeah. Kaylee has the tattoos of a bowling alley waitress. She, I, she walks in the tattoo shop like, I got seven bucks and some Xanax. Who wants to help me get back at my mom? Bob is like the human version of Malort. Oh. It's disgusting, smelly, and the last thing I ever want in my mouth. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Kaylee's from a small town called Elmira, New York. It's the kind of town where fifth graders get abortions just for the lollipop. And that and was worth her, it. And, and look at her. And look, Killer ending, you guys. And, no, no. And look at her. She's definitely been asked to put out her cigarette during a C-section. Thank God you tagged the end, because otherwise... 
Cool. All right. There we go. All right, let's go to the panel. Here we go. Who wants to start it off? Who wants to raise their hand? Hop in there, hop in Bob, there. Bob, you should have stopped while you were behind. <laughs> This was a fun battle between the PTA and the PE teacher who touches kids. This is a fun legal case between downtown Chicago and the fucking suburbs. This was... And what a surprise. I think the suburbs won. My vote goes to Kaylee. One for Kaylee. One for Kaylee. All right, Katie Kincaid. Oh, man. Bob, you, you look like you only search for stepdaughter porn. <laughs> And then Kaylee just looks like the stepdaughter. So. <laughs> no, this was super fun. This was so hard. There were so many great jokes. I loved the, the three to five years. I loved the, the Malort joke at the end was crazy good. The cum kazoo joke was so good. Um, I, feel like, I feel like Bob really was, like, had in was a little bit more consistent, but I just think those pops at the end for Kaylee, I think the Malort joke was the best one of all. I'm going to go with Kaylee. Oh, yeah. Two for Kaylee, two for Kaylee, all right. Chris Creco, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I gotta keep this short because you guys gotta go, you know, back to whatever bus route you both are driving. So, honestly, what was great about this battle was watching everyone not wanting Bob to win. <laughs> However, laughing because, dude, he had twerking with the shoulders. He had the, the wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man thing. He had the kazoo noises. He had the cunt. <laughs> but Kaylee had the comebacks. She had the eating shit. She had the malort. Oh, yeah. I'm going to keep it interesting. I think Bob is four to Kaylee's three. I'm going to give my vote to Bob. Good job, both of you. All right, one for Bob. One for Bob. Here we go. Oh, let's keep it interesting. Who do I go to next? Nick Curry, you look ready. Um, well, Bob said that Kaylee looked like a bowling alley waitress when Bob looks like he got arrested at a bowling alley, which is crazy. For pulling out of his, pulling out his dick and being like, this is a 16 pound ball right here. This is a 16 pound ball. Over the line. <laughs> um, both of you guys had awesome jokes. It was a sick battle, but uh, Kaylee had that sick ending joke and I've been giving it to the, you gotta end with a banger. So I'm gonna give it to Kaylee. Kaylee was awesome. All right, Kaylee's got it. Brandon Kiefer, wrap us up here. Wrap us up. I hate it. Remember, Kiefer, I'm giving you a ride home. Yeah, I'm voting for you regardless. You already lost, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate to see people, uh, two people fight from the same trailer park. You know what I mean? <laughs> I will say both of you guys are great. Bob, you really shit the bed at the end. Uh, but I did think it was great. And uh, you are my ride, so I'm voting for you <laughs> solely because I'd like to get back to Chicago. <laughs> Three to two is a win. <laughs> Bob gets it so they can buy pizza, pizza and Casey's on the way back or some bullshit like that. Give it up. Kaylee wins it. That's our last one right there. We have one more. We have one more. We have one more. Give it up for Kaylee Horton, Bob Keen there. Here we go. Give it up for them, guys. You guys been great? You guys doing good? All right, once again, guys, we're taping this. We're going to put this up on YouTube. Once again, we want to give a great thanks out to the Vixen being a wonderful host for us here tonight. This is what it's about. Uh, we're going to be selling merch. We have t-shirts exclusively for the show that we have in the back as well. Come by, say hi. We'll put the link up on the screen. You guys can follow us on all the different apps. We have a Patreon where you guys can support us as well and uh, see the shows completely unedited so we don't get fired from a Fortune 500 company in the future uh, because we said some really inappropriate shit. Let me ask you a question. Are you guys ready for your main event tonight? All those people hiding in the back corner. Are you guys ready for your main event tonight? Please get loud for the Queenie Bitch and Jessica Mitsutano! All right. Okay. All right. Ladies, who wants to go first here? Bitch, I'll do it. All right. You guys know the deal. Here we go. One more time. Get loud. Back to the front. Three, two, one. Yeah. Jess looks like Mary Magdalene only ate cake at the Last Supper. You know, because she's a fat whore. I 
feel like Queenie is what conservatives see under their beds at night. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead, slender them. Yeah. I feel like when Jess was born, God asked a question. What if toxic masculinity was a woman? And now we know. Thanks, Jess. All right, Meth Curry. I feel... <laughs> You gotta trim the last pound somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like you're what would happen if Disney bought out the NBA. <laughs> yeah. Jess is proof that sometimes it really doesn't get better. <laughs> sometimes you just turn into a criminal. <laughs> Honestly, check her bag on the way out. You're gonna find that microphone in it. This is how little I trust her. I don't even think that's her hair. Um, yeah. I mean, God. <laughs> Uh, Queenie's uh, quite the activist, uh, but I feel like if no. MLK knew you were the future, he would have kept, kept that dream to himself. <laughs> Ro yeah, Rosa oh Parks God. would have walked for sure, yeah. <laughs> so, never mind. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but she's like super obsessed with me. <laughs> just, I just want you to know, I'm gay. Oh my God, it's never gonna happen. I never fuck women who are, like, less hot than I am. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I feel like Jess looks like Janis Joplin survived and just decided she was just gonna do different drugs. <laughs> you know, she was supposed to be my ride today, and she was like, hey, do you want to take pills and pass out in the river? And I was just like, Kevin, can we find a different ride? <laughs> I did say that today, yeah. yeah. I read it to my boss. They're like, who are you? Yeah. You know, Queenie is quite the fashion icon, uh, isn't she? Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, they say to, they say to wear your hobbies on your sleeve, and I guess that yeah. explains the anal beads hanging off the back of her head. It's called a bubble braid. I thought you were a hairdresser. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to look at your hair. <laughs> anyway though, give it up for Amy Halfway House. <laughs> She's been amazing so far. You think, she admits to this, she shoplifts like a bitch. Mm -hmm. She really does, okay? She shoplifts like crazy, which is crazy because if you're just gonna spend that much time in Target and you're in aisle four, just shoplift a personality. Like what's going on? They're 50% off. What is your excuse? Now we know where you got your shoes. She liked uh, it. <laughs> she didn't like your bangs, though. Yeah. The bangs were a bad choice, okay? I understand that, though. Also, you have anal beads on the back of your head. Uh, I know what I like. Tell a joke. Shut up, King Tuck. Uh, <laughs> Queenie, <laughs> Queenie is black and gay. Half. <laughs> All right, Queenie's half black and very gay. The gay makes up for the lack of black. <laughs> I 
it's, it's fine. It goes to show you can take two negatives and turn them into an HIV positive. <laughs> I told my doctor that was private. <laughs> one more, one more. No, two more, Kevin. Shut the fuck up. All right, up. fine, whatever. No one likes you, you bald bitch. <laughs> All right, well. Here's the thing. Shut up, Jeff. Okay. Everyone has their favorite porn category, right? I know you do. I can see it in your eyes. But for Jess, it's mean aunt bullies high school or out of lunch money. Doesn't Queenie dress like she's like 95% of the way done? Why? Like you, you just always look like somebody just snatched your wig off your head. <laughs> all right, all right. These you bitches just... are treacherous. Yeah. Pageants are hard. <laughs> Here's the thing though, Jessica looks like a rape charge got really into incest porn and forgot to wear a condom. So? Here it is. <laughs> All right, she calls herself Queenie, but by her gaudy makeup and very uncomfortable looking bold, she looks more like the Goblin King. I. Aren't you just, aren't you supposed to be fighting against the fact that drag queens are a danger to kids everywhere? All right, no, fuck I hate me. kids. <laughs> fuck those bitches. Yeah, that's the problem, <laughs> sorry. All right, all right, give it up for oh. Queenie and Jess. <laughs> Queenie and Jess right there, goddamn. Now you guys Ooh. talk. Woo, it's like when my mom saw, I, it's like when I saw my mom fist fight someone for a Tickle Me Elmo. Yeah. There we go, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with Nick Cartwright. Nick, you're right over there, I see you right that there. That was an awesome battle. Can you guys give it a little bit time for that battle? That was fucking sick. That was so much better than the last time I saw them fight, which was for the discount mascara at Thornton's. <laughs> Um, no, both of you guys, I mean, uh, Jess had some real slammers. Uh, Queenie is the only person to ever make me laugh at a she didn't like your bangs joke, though. Like, I, usually I don't laugh, laugh at the bangs joke, but uh, I gotta give it to Jess just because of the slammers. The, she had some really, really All good jokes right. there. Because of the slammers, one for Jess, Katie Kincaid. My God, I, I know one of you is a drag queen, but I can't tell which one. <laughs> Oh my God, this was, this was a fucking banger. The top, that's a headlining battle if I've ever seen one. That was so good, so fucking good. God, Queenie, you really put the bitch in Queenie bitch, I will say. Oh man, and Jess, just the, the, the anal beads joke, the Queenie with the yeah, come back. I did not see that coming, that was amazing. But just, God, Jess is just a fucking monster, you know, just a monster. And I, I had to give the Jess just because of the, uh, the Grand Slams there. Two for Jess, two for Jess. Brandon Kiefer. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> I, I love your heels, Queenie. I've never seen heels in a men's size 14. <laughs> it's a 15. <laughs> either, either way, either way, you bought it from a hardware store. <laughs> I, I'd put them under my car when I changed the tire, for sure. Um, <laughs> And Jess, you're the reason women get paid less. Um, <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. That's a headlining fucking battle. Queenie, you ruled. Your comebacks were fantastic. But Jess has a heart of blackness. All right? <laughs> and I'm giving it to Jess. Jess has got it. Jess has got it. Here we go. Here we go. Who wants it? Mr. Matt Batmore, how are you? Queenie's heels are taller than Brandon. <laughs> Dude, that was a fucking amazing battle. Queenie, it takes some balls to do what you did. Luckily, you got him. And <laughs> that was fucking sick. Dude, and Queenie, he's Queenie had canceled. two. Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? I, uh, I don't have a career to begin with. <laughs> Fair. Dude, that was an amazing. You had two one-word comebacks. That was fucking awesome, dude. 
I love I loved your joke about Jess's hair. At least Jess has the audacity to cut off what she hates about herself. <laughs> okay. Okay, Matt Bamworth versus Queenie, bitch, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's okay, I don't give a fuck. You guys are both girthy in different ways, and that's fun. That's fun. Fucking amazing battle, tops to bottoms, and holy shit, I mean, uh, this one's one for the generations. Both of you are fucking amazing roasters. It kills me to pick a winner. I think I'm gonna give it to Queen. I think Queenie had, I've been going highest highs all night. Queenie had the highest highs. My vote goes to Queenie. Great fucking job. You're an amazing comedian, you should know. Mr. Chris Grieco, wrap us up. Damn, dude. One thing I took away from that battle is the lesbians loved you very much. That really was Queer Eye for the straight guy. I mean, I've never seen two dudes wannabe chicks so bad on stage. Yeah, that's good. I like Jess, that. your, the, I mean, Jess, your Disney joke with the combination of Queenie's, like, riff at the end was one of my favorite things I've ever seen on Rosebud. That was just, it was just so funny. Queenie's comebacks your whole time, was, it was amazing. Jessica, your HIV positive joke was one of my favorites. This is just so great. Uh, I would have given it for Queenie because I loved your comebacks that whole time and I think that's what made that, that extra level of special for that battle. You guys are awesome, thank you for doing it. Give it up for Queenie! Give it up for Jess! That's a hell of a fucking roast battle! Do you guys want us to come back? Give me a hell yeah! Oh my God, stay here, the bar is open. We have t-shirts in the back just for here. How we doing, how we doing? Good, good, there we go. Give it up for Michael on photos, Justin on camera. The great staff here at the Vixen, our wonderful panel, Brandon Kiefer, Katie Kincaid, Matt Banward, Nick Carwright, Chris Grieco. We've been Rose Battle. Thank you so fucking much. You guys have a great night.